Math 31, welcome to example four. So let's take a look. We are being asked to find a sub n and a sub 10 for an arithmetic sequence having a sub four equaling 18 and a sub five equaling 22. All right, so buzzwords that are standing out for me. I hear arithmetic, so I think to myself, okay, what's D? I hear sequence, right? So we've got lists that we're gonna make. All right, and this will, again, this will get contrasted when we get into 9.4 and we look at series, but arithmetic, D, list, I'm sorry, sorry, sequence, list of numbers. All right, so when I have an arithmetic sequence, I, I know I'm, I've got this formula at my disposal. And then we gotta work it, all right? And when you start to want, or when you want to find a sub n, the two critical pieces of information you need for that are a sub one and d. So whenever you want a sub n in general to write that explicit formula, which is the first thing I'm being asked to do, I really need a sub one and I really need d. So let's see how we can piece that together given what we have. So all I know this, at this point is I know a sub four is 18 and a sub five is 22. Well, I can do D, it's gotta be equal to a sub five minus a sub four, or in this case, that is 22 minus 18. So I see that D has to be equal to four. All right, so that's gonna be crucial. I'll keep that tucked away. That's something I'm gonna wanna use later. So D is equal to four, I have that pretty crucial piece of information, but what I don't have is a sub one. Now there are a couple of ways to attack this. We could actually just count backwards, right? If we know we have 22, we can say, well then a sub four was 18. If I go back one more, this would have been 14, then I would have had 10, and then I would have had six, right? So we can count backwards and we can see that a sub one is equal to six. So that is definitely one way to do this. But this counting backwards idea, it's only working right now because these subscripts aren't very large numbers. Right? What if this had been a sub 5,000? I don't wanna count backwards that many times. So how could I have found a sub one using this formula? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this off in a bubble because we're gonna come back to this, but I wanna show you how you could use either of these two terms to find a sub one. Because again, I really want a sub one and I want a sub, excuse me, I really want a sub one and D if I have to find a sub n. So let me how, show you how I can do this. I'm gonna erase this. Just keep in mind that we know a sub one is six right now. And I'll show you how you could have used either of these terms to get a sub one. Okay, so here we go. If you know that a sub four is equal to 18 and you know D, here we go, watch this. And I, I can also do this with a sub five. I'm just gonna pick a sub four. So you know a sub four, according to this formula, would be equal to a sub one plus four minus one times d, right? So this is me now working this formula, not to find a sub n, but to find a sub one, right? Okay, well we know a sub four is 18. I don't know a sub one. Four minus one would be three, and we knew d was equal to four, right? So now when I solve this, I'm gonna get 18 is equal to a sub one plus 12. So I think you see me arriving at a sub one equaling six. So you can rework this formula to find a sub one because again, there's always four variables, a sub n, a sub one, n, and d. Well, we just found d, all right? And if I know a sub four is 18, that's two of the variables, right? You see the n and you see the 18, right? So then I know this number is 18, but I know this one's four. And I could have done the same thing with a sub five. So let me just show you, if you had wanted to, I could have worked it this way. I could have said a sub five was equal to a sub one plus five minus one times d. And let's fill this in. This would have been 22, would have been equal to a sub one plus four times four. Well, that's saying 22 would be equal to a sub one plus 16, and I'm still getting that a sub one is six. So either way, at this point, we've actually gone through three ways to get a sub one. We counted backwards initially. Then we used this arithmetic sequence formula and plugged in n equaling four. I also just decided to use it, show it to you again, using this arithmetic sequence formula with n equaling five. All three ways we get a sub one is six. So let me just go ahead and say, now we know a sub one is six, okay? Now, because I don't have enough room right here, I'm gonna erase this. So if you wanna, I just wanted you to see it works both ways. 
All right, so let me erase this because we already know a sub one is six. All right. Okay, so here we go. Now, I haven't even found a sub n yet, so let's answer this question and then I will do a sub 10. All right, so if I want a sub n, I'm gonna rewrite this formula again just so we can see it get plugged in. a sub one, n minus one d. All right, now we know a sub one, we know it's six. I'm gonna leave n as is and I know d is four. So let me simplify this a little bit. This would be six plus four n minus four so if I clean this up a little bit, I'm looking at two plus four n. Or you could have written it as four n plus two, but I wanna just be clear, right? This is the explicit formula, which is great, because now we can find any a sub n value for any n value. So let's figure this out. We found a sub n, now I want a sub 10. So if I go here, a sub 10 should equal two plus four times 10, so that would equal 42. All right, so the main advantage in finding a sub n, and I like to find a sub n first, is then I can plug in any subscript that I want and I can find that a sub nth term, whereas if you were just gonna use um, this formula for a sub 10, it would just limit you only to a sub 10, a la what we saw in example three. So for me personally, I find the explicit formula first, and then I plug in my n value. Now I do want you to just see one alternate way that you could have done this. So let's say you found d in a sub one and you wanted to do this first, right? Let's say you wanted to find a sub 10 first, even though I just went through my whole spiel about how I like finding the explicit formula first and then plugging in n. Let me show you just a different approach to this. So what I could have done, I'm gonna cover this up, keeping in mind we knew a sub one was, what did we just say it was, six, and d was four. What I could have done is I could have used this formula now and found a sub 10, I could have said that was equal to a sub one plus 10 minus one times d. All right, so in this case, we would have had six plus nine times d was four. So we get six plus 36, which lo and behold is 42. All right, but again, if you go after a sub 10 first, you're limited just to a sub 10, that's it. You kind of just, stop at this point, you say, all right, I have a sub 10 is 42, and you still have to go back and find a sub n to finish the question out, which is why personally, I think it's just faster and more efficient to find a sub n first, and then plug in n equaling 10. But you can do it either way, right? So we've got a couple of ways of finding a specific term, a sub 10, or you can find, a, like I said, you can find a sub 10 first, or you can find a sub n in general, and then plug 10 in. So find a method that works best for you. All right, so when we flip to the next page, we're gonna keep on practicing this arithmetic sequence formula and how to manipulate it. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.